Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. After the pandemic, but during the pandemic, they found in 2019 and 2021 that of the 8 million new gun owners that we have in America during that time, just during that time, because most people found out what well, the government's not there to save them, no. right? If anything, they're hurting their possibility of doing that, that 48% of those 8 million are women. Places with the most strict gun restrictions, uh, Chicago, mm-hmm. Baltimore, you know, California, those are the places that have the highest incidence of gun mm-hmm. violence and crime. Right. Guns just aren't for personal protection. They're also really fun. And right. they bring so many extraordinary experiences that are really enriching to our lives. I'm sorry to break it to you. Um, we're not mostly all good uh, and stuff like that where people think about. So in, with, with light of that fact, you need to defend yourself. Mm-hmm. Nobody needs this type of firearm, mm-hmm. right? Or, you know, vice versa. The need word the really need. freaks me. You don't need that for a deer hunt. You don't need that. You have a God-given right to all of that. It Mm -hmm. says to keep and bear arms, not not hunting arms. Right, not hunting arms. Not you know, not you know. I'm going to go out shooting for recreational sports arms, whatever arms. It is to protect you from a tyrannical, oppressive government that wants to make decisions for you, Mm -hmm. and that is why we have that second enshrined in the second in the Constitution is for that very reason. Pioneering the spirit of the Wild West with 70 years of legendary innovation by your side. Built on the legacy of the Ruger Single Six, the new Wrangler is aimed for the drifter in all of us. Saddle up and ride, this one is wanted. The perfect revolver, whether it's your first or your next. Hey, I'm Christy Titus, and for the past several years, I've really come to rely on OnX Hunt for mapping both in and out of the field. But now I'm also using it to plan and research units for my application season. OnX has teamed up with TopRet to show you everything that you need for draw odds in most of the Western states. And access to TopRet services is completely free to all elite members. I now have both the power of Onyx Hunt and Top Rut to help me strategize my state hunting applications. If you haven't already, download Onyx Hunt and upgrade to the elite membership to access Top Rut as well as other great elite benefits. Hey everybody, I am here with Antonia Okafor Cover, and we are um, hanging out. We have been at the Armed Women of America uh, Regional Conference in Fort Smith, Arkansas mm-hmm. all weekend. Mm-hmm. And we're so glad to have you out here. This is not your first time though at AWA. You are a strong 2A advocate and you're the founder of <laughs> GOA's now sponsored Empowered 2A Movement, correct? Yes, yes. I started it in 2017, which doesn't feel that long ago, but it is a lot longer than I, I think. Well, I've <laughs> seen you in the two we've met so many times in the yeah. two way community. I think this is the first time we've actually like sat down oh, yeah. in this type of setting and yeah. talked two way advocacy and life and politics and I all this know. great stuff. I know. And it's funny, like the I kind of the last time I think I saw you was still like pre COVID. So even yeah. now it was like almost three years ago. So, so it goes by so quickly. And you have since th- your life has changed yes. so much. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, been married, uh, have two kiddos now. Yeah. So yes. And I'm about almost two year old next week, this week, actually two year old. So yeah, a little bit different, but it's, I, I mean, going back to empowered, like two ways, just like, it's funny because when I started, I was a grad student, so college life, young, single. I'm not saying, mm-hmm, I'm, I should, maybe I'm young. I don't know, but I'm definitely <laughs> not single, and things have changed, and my energy is different. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they have two little ones, but, like, just different, you know, stage of life. Yeah. You know, still a woman. Um, I, maybe I should uh, – sometimes I just, you know, in this day and age <laughs> – yeah, <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, of course you're still a woman. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so going back well, to yeah, where yeah. you you're started like, in your gun journey, like 
your two A advocacy, you know, like you're saying, you're a young woman, fresh out of grad school, 2017. Mm-hmm. You are on fire for the Second Amendment. <laughs> what started that? Well, uh, that's the thing is, like, I did not even grow up that way in any sense. For those who know my story, it was actually anti two A, anti Second Amendment. It was voted Democrat, Obama, etc. Um, we won't hold that. Oh yeah. Her. <laughs> And I'm trying to do stuff good for the community because of that. Yeah, and also, no. um, be, I also think because I have that ability yeah. to remember, like, who I was and why I changed, then I can talk to other people. And so I'm in outreach now. It's like getting people yeah. to, to go on our side. But Well, and the thing is, the Second Amendment transcends any political party. Yeah. The Second absolutely. Amendment is for everyone. So whether we agree on the politics necessarily mm-hmm. of today – uh, we all have the right to defend ourselves. Absolutely. And we all have the Second Amendment right. And and that is something that is enshrined in the Constitution. But the right to protection mm-hmm. is really a God-given given grant. Absolutely. Uh, you Even know, if it, the Second Amendment wasn't there, absolutely. you would have that right. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, that's one thing I really, you know, all joking aside about, you know, who you voted for or didn't, yeah. uh, we want to make sure that everybody in the world actually – you know, in the country feels like the second amendment is for them. Right. Um, and that's really important. And I think you do a great job of reaching out and saying, Hey, let's, I was this political party before, mm-hmm. but I've, I've changed my mind because of this. Right. And so, um, you don't have to necessarily jump party is the way you did. Right. I invite you to, <laughs> um, but, uh, well, you don't yeah. have to because the second yeah. amendment really is for everybody. Right. And just be, and, and let's just be here honest here. Like, that's why I'm part of the Guns of America because I mean we are known for regardless of which what I always say what regardless of what letter you have behind your name that's right Republican Libertarian Democrat I mean I've seen all three um, more than others right some more than others yeah. that have been anti Second Amendment who have not done what they're supposed to do when it comes to the platform when it comes to protecting and preserving uh, this right that should be protected because. First of all, it's in the Bill of Rights, but because it's a human right, right? That's right. And so um, there's people who are on all sides who we have to call out. Um, and I think that's important to keep us accountable, but also to s- remain true to if it, it becomes a, par- a political a party thing, then I don't think we keep that accountability yeah. and our, our rights are watered down because of that. Um, so that's why I try to say very Second Amendment focused, single mm-hmm. issue pre- with Empower 2A. That's single issue focus on just getting more women into the realm to become more of the face of yeah. the Second Amendment, which they are. And in just the last couple of years, I mean, I think it's interesting. Interesting because like the last time I saw you was 2019 yeah. and now it's 2022. Sorry if this is dating myself, but um, really this is pivotal time because I mean Harvard, Georgetown have done all these studies um, ap- after the pandemic, but during the pandemic they found in 2019 and 2021 that of the eight million new gun owners that we have in America during that time, just during that time, because most people found out what the government's not there to save them, no. right? If anything, they're hurting their possibility of doing that, that 48% of those 8 million are women. That's a huge jump. Yeah. And then of those 48% more, or those uh, women are, 21% of them are, women, are black women. Mm-hmm. So like we've, and then that's Asian, like everything. Like I've never seen this diverse of numbers yeah. when it comes to the gun movement. So it's just almost like, what is going on here? But also it's like, finally, because yeah. of course this makes sense. It well, makes what, sense. What made it click for you? So you're a young woman out of grad school. Mm-hmm. You, you're a Democrat voting person that is is anti-2A. Mm-hmm. What changed? What changed is finally realizing, because what you always see, right, and the media does it, is to per- perpetuate this notion that people who have guns, the only people who have guns are bad guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... In college, uh, actually Obama during that time, he was doing a big study on campus sexual assault. And I was, you know, again, I was on the left. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm, I still consider my, myself a feminist. And for those who are like, oh, my goodness, let me explain myself. Um, but at that time, especially, I was definitely more left leaning. But I was in this world, a space of, OK, campus sexual assault, rape culture, all of that that we hear. Right. But I got sick and tired as a sexual assault survivor myself. I got sick and tired of always the same solutions mm-hmm. to this problem. And finally I was just like, what if, what if like I could do something? Yeah. Like 
I'm competent. I'm, I'm, I can learn. I can take care of myself. And I looked into self-defense and I was just like, this is not going to work. Yeah. Like I'm a woman. And even if I put these self-defense tactics in, you know, you do maybe one class or whatever, um, this is not going to give me that equal position mm -hmm. against any type of man because mm -hmm. pound for pound, there's they a have more lean, of force. Right. They mm -hmm. have more, even muscle mass, even without a firearm, yeah. or without a weapon. I need to protect myself. So that got me into this, I don't say rabbit hole because people always say it's like a conspiracy thing, but it's just the truth of finding out like I should be able to have a gun. I'm on yeah. college campus. for So why can't I have a gun? Why is rape whistle, which I received in freshman year of, of orientation, the only self-defense I'm allowed to have on a college campus? And also, if you're talking about campus sexual assault for women, like, can we talk about how I can protect myself first so we don't have to talk about the aftermath or yeah. leave it up to the man to, like, decide not to be evil and do an evil act? Mm -hmm. um, so that's what brought me into, okay, I actually am pro Second Amendment and I want to do something about it. And I'm going to start with my college campus. And so I realized like I'm so sick and tired of the narrative always being about the perpetrator. Like I want to see what I can do now. Like I want to protect myself now. And so that brought me on to becoming the Southwest Director for Students for Concealed Carry, which mm -hmm. is leading leading the movement in campus carry on all over the nation. But in Texas at that time, so it was about 2015, 2016 when this happened. Um, so, uh, you know, help. Um, push that along but my primary focus was the implementation so it was passed in 2015 and then it was implemented in 2016 so I just got I just you know went on the front lines and it's like yeah. started um, being a voice and vocal about that because I was just you know like I stay 90% or more of my time and I was a commuter I wasn't even living on campus but people who are 100% yeah. of time on campus they should have every right to defend themselves and just because they're a student doesn't mean that that's where their protection or second amendment should end yeah you know and so and I knew that as a woman because I just knew I want to protect myself against the other people who are on campus as Absolutely. well who are trying to harm me but um but the fact of the matter is is like even more of that is that you know schools whether they're camp whether on campus a college campus or K through 12 are gun-free zones um, and that's where criminals do the most harm because Absolutely. they know that they're vulnerable and yeah. and so I just became passionate about that as a student and that has I brought Empower 2A along as uh, as my way of kind of contributing to the second amendment world of wanting to bring you know like you know I came from this feminist background and female empowerment like why don't we have both why isn't the second amendment and female empowerment why isn't that like a narrative combined. yeah to combine something that we can reach masses with so especially women and so that's how I kind of got into the, the second well, amendment I was really surprised so my husband and I just moved to Wyoming and um, and I, I feel like I was super ignorant in this. Wyoming is a constitutional carry state and a Second Amendment sanctuary state. I was shocked yesterday when you said it's oh. one of the states that does not allow campus carry. Yeah. And in that moment, I was like, oh, my gosh we I want to help you <laughs> that has to go away especially yeah. in a state like Wyoming why are our college students in any state number one not able to carry defend right. themselves but in a in a place where we would think would be um pro second amendment pro very pro second yeah. amendment and it's it's truly not as pro second amendment as it needs to be so mm. that's where it's really important you know for for all of us individually to look at um look at within our communities mm -hmm. look within our um our states look within uh, you know our school districts or whatever it is and find out how can i help keep my community safer and an armed community is a safer community absolutely bottom line i mean statistically proven uh, gun free zones um Places with the most strict gun restrictions, uh, Chicago, mm -hmm. Baltimore, you know, California, those are the places that have the highest incidence of gun mm -hmm. violence and crime. Right. And so we find places where, you know, if you walk into anywhere in Wyoming, you don't know who has a firearm because anybody can carry. It's constitutional carry. It is your right in that state to carry a firearm. And I mean, the people that want to do harm are most likely going to think twice about victimizing those places because right. you never know. Every every face out there could be a potential uh, gun carrying, Second Amendment supporting person right. that's trained. Right. Um, and so you're less likely to want to violate those people. So um, I think that 
every one of us has a place, even if we feel like we're in a safe state. Like I feel like I'm, mm-hmm. hey, I'm in a safe state that so loves the Second Amendment. There's work to be done there. Yeah, absolutely. And we can all in, and I'm in Texas. In that. I I, com- yeah. I understand completely that whole narrative of like, hey, I'm in a free state, and yeah. then you're like, oh, oh, yeah. But where I live, my community, like you said, like does that does that state? Sure, but does that city? Yeah. Right. Okay, you're in Texas, but. I live in Houston. Okay. Or, or you live in Austin. Like, that's not Texas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that's not the same thing. But then even more so, like you were saying in Wyoming, like a lot of higher education places are dictated by a lot of anti-gun people. That's right. And they make the decisions and they mm-hmm. say, like, you can't have a gun. Sure, you're, you can have a gun at home, but you're thousands of miles from home yeah. and you, you live here. Mm-hmm. So you're not protected here. So I just think it's so important. Like we can't make it about red States or what we're saying blue States. No. Like it doesn't even red cities, blue cities. Like literally where is your every day? Where do you, from the, from where do you go from your house to your, your vehicle to where your place of work is? A lot yeah. of people have places of work don't even allow you to have, mm-hmm. um, you know, carry. So you can be doing activism there, yeah. right? Because you spend a lot of your time there or you spend a lot of time. Your vehicle. Or if you're working like, you're walking to your car exactly I mean, to be disarmed absolutely. while you're on the job is a terrible thing I absolutely mean, you never know where workplace violence is going to take form i mean this is it's 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 a tragedy what has been happening i think um and in a lot of i think you know our gun violence we're seeing these days is you know, we have a tremendous uh, mental health issue in our country mm-hmm. and there's a lot of people that are crying out for help um and it's th- those cries are not being heard they're not being answered they're not being addressed and you know it's it is a major problem our nick system has a lot of fragmentation mm-hmm. and problems in our nick system um which for those of you listening that don't know that's the national instant check system um and that is the system that people the database that they run when they do a background check um and when we have agencies that are taking criminals or people that have mental uh illnesses and they're not entering those properly into those NIC systems there's a there's a disconnect in them Mm -hmm. right so they can only be effective as the system is and the system needs help um and then obviously taking the laws that are already on the books and enforcing them and not creating all this new bureaucratic red tape that really just penalizes the law abiding citizen that wants to defend themselves, wants to go hunting, enjoy shooting sports. I mean, these are all things that we have to look at collectively, no matter where we are. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it is such a, it is such a huge concern because we all feel powerless and we all want the same thing. Right. We all want to feel safe. Right. We all want to be safe in our own communities. And yeah. that transcends everything. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. I mean, again, like you be a woman and that can be different than a man, but even different stages, right? Again, five, seven years ago, I would have been, okay, my concerns are college campuses or yeah. going to work or whatever. But now I'm like on top of that, my family, like my kids, um, daycare. I mean, these school shootings and stuff like that. And, and someone just recently asked me, and they're like, well, now that you're a mother – um, do you have any, do you feel differently about gun rights and everything? Like if anything, I'm more pro gun rights because now I like, heck yeah, I want to make be able to t- take care of my two little ones yeah. and my husband's not going to always be there. And now I have two other, not just myself, right. But also two other ones that literally depend, depend on, on me for everything and especially their safety. Um, and it makes it a lot harder to defend anybody when you're, you're trying to protect two other ones. So mm-hmm. yeah, I want to have my, my, my gun rights, especially taken care of, um, and I want them to be in the schools that are protected yeah. by good men and women who are going to protect them. So um, what schools have you helped implement campus carry? Uh, so uh, I was part of what Texas. So um, that was all public. So through the bill, it was all state universities mm-hmm. that had to take it because you're taking our, the dollars from the, the citizens. So, yeah, they you have to implement it. It's a public university. The private schools, which I totally understand why they implemented it, it was um, in that way. Uh, and that's kind of like we just have to do more. You have to do more grassroots work that way. But the private schools had to made it, make the decision of if they wanted to or not. Um, all of them except for one, and, and one was – mostly a, an online school mm-hmm. so <laughs> no, we, we say it's okay but again in texas so we had the baylor say no mm-hmm. we had as you know southern methodist university we had all the you know t- 
I know people were like, what? No, not my school. Yeah, TCU, like all these good Southern schools mm-hmm. that, you know, also you guys are, you donors that out there giving those money, giving money to those schools said, no, no, we're going to keep your school and your children in a gun free zone. Gun-free well, they're not zone. children, they're adults. Right, exactly. I mean, right, they're not, yeah, like, exactly, uh, yeah, you know, exactly. people in college are not little kids. Absolutely. They are adults, they're capable, they go to war, they oh, drink yeah. alcohol, they buy alcohol, they right. can smoke cigarettes. I mean, these are yeah. adult decisions of things that you can do with your body yeah, you can't protect yourself. It doesn't oh, yeah. make any sense to me. And they would use, and that's the thing too, the hypocrisy. And we see the same thing with women, right? In the news, you'll see, oh, well, women can do whatever they want. But when it comes to fire, oh, then you'll start to see all the sexist comments come out. Mm-hmm. of like, but women more than likely you're going to use that gun against you. So you shouldn't have a gun. You're like, Mm -hmm. how is that not sexist? I mean, Mm -hmm. the same thing with college shootings, what I saw all the time was with media and anti-gun people was, oh, oh yeah, our best and our brightest and they're doing great stuff for this country until you bring firearm topics into this. Suddenly then, oh, everyone's inebriated and they have a gun and, you know, know, Mm -hmm. they're going to use it in in an evil way. Like, no, you were completely fine Mm -hmm. with them being responsible adults Mm -hmm. before, before you decided, um, uh, now that because they have now this right to protection on college campuses, suddenly they're going to be irresponsible people, children, you know, mm-hmm. um, again, that uh, that's what it comes down to. It's that people can make any argument against that at the end of the day, though. And we can't always help what people are going to do. But what I can do to help myself is to defend myself against whether the actions, the good or evil actions yeah. that other person has against me. And like, that's what it always has to be about is that this is not a utopia. This is not a perfect world. We'll never be. It's, um, I, I for those who break it, sorry to break it to you. Um, we're not mostly all good, uh, and stuff like that, where people think about. So in with, with light of that fact, you need to defend yourself mm-hmm. and you need to defend that the people that you know, and, and that's the best way that you can go through life being able to be prepared. So you work now with gun owners of America, which is a second amendment advocacy group. Um, it's, tr- they're doing tremendous things throughout the country they've got a great legislative policy team that is really fighting for second amendment advocacy on the hill which is where we need it obviously Mm -hmm. um really some really brilliant minds with goa you have worked you're now working with them Mm -hmm. with empowered 2a and you guys are taking this message and really lobbying and pushing to make it to where more college campuses have the opportunity in those those young adults have the opportunity to protect themselves at campuses during college years yeah absolutely um and <clears throat> and we have a great student program um, that actually just came out. So um, to a defender. So that's our student program. And uh, so Empower to a started out as a student program. And then as I've as I've aged, um, no, as I've, as I've won the opportunity for all women. Right. Yeah. It's like I would love to be a part of it. I'm just I'm aged out of it, you know, type of thing. It was like, OK, now Empower to a is for all women, all yeah. ages of stages of life. Um, but we have a student program. Um, and so they're doing things like that. Like, again, it's about the community that you're in. So people always wonder why we have to divide. Not saying that we should always, but there are things unique to our communities that are going to be different yeah. where we are. So in our stages of life, I mean, for women, it can the whole stages of life run the gamut. But for students, for college students, they're there for a four year span, yeah. maybe five years, depending on the student. Right. Or or even those Ph.D. who have a unique experience and their big thing, their issues is uh, campus carry. Mm-hmm. So that's something that student program, our student programs have been able to be, you know, a force in. But we're doing everything from the state level, from the federal level. Um, I mean, even with women with Empower 2A, like my focus and my vision with Empower 2A and what GOA um, is, you know, thankfully brought me on board to do is to get women to be the face of the Second Amendment wherever yeah. they are at, are at, whether in their stages of life or in their community where, that we have people from all races, from all backgrounds who are mm-hmm. women and to, you know, go against this agenda of like mom's demand action yeah. and all these places that want to make it seem like because you're pro-woman, you have to be anti-gun. And mm-hmm. and I've always seen through life <clears throat> is that being pro-woman is pro-self-defense. I mean, yeah. come on. <clears throat> and that, that just makes more sense. It's logical. Yeah. And, and I think that that also being pro-self-defense is, is pro being able to ha- enjoy recreation and shooting sports too. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause right. not, you know, firearms ownership isn't just for self-defense. So as of recent, you know, you are a firearms instructor, mm-hmm. right? You, you instruct women, you instruct classes. Now you're not actively doing that right now because of you're just had, uh, yeah, right. but you are an instructor. So you've taken that and said, okay, not only do I want to help you have the right to carry, I'm going to help train you to carry, 
but you're participating in shooting sports and you started hunting. Yes, yes. And um, man, my first ever hunt. Uh, With Henry and Lakeisha, which I love them from Halo Hunting. Like if yes. you guys aren't following them, they're also super awesome. Amazing, you need to follow them. Amazing, amazing, <clears throat> amazing God-fearing couple that just gr- humble and grounded. And they, she, Lakeisha invited me actually pre-COVID and then we had to cancel it. But I was with Liberty Austin and um, my, uh, her humble hunt. And we got to all finally in uh, 2021, I, I brought my little one with me um, to go to this all girl hunt. And we went to some Mississippi and I got to shoot and I thankfully got to shoot and take him a turkey for the very first time. Yeah. It was it was a three day thing of like going out and trying and going out and trying and finally got my first turkey. So, yeah, it was a great experience. Still mm-hmm. like I and mean, we got it on video. So um, it was an awesome, awesome experience to be a part of. Mm-hmm. But uh, Mossy Oak, actually, if you I don't know if you sorry, if it's. Oh, no, <laughs> you're good. It's about, um, they have it, the video if anybody wants to yeah. see it. But it's called Mississippi Shuffle Shuffle. And um, I'm, but I'm just I'm ready. I did bird hunting, so I did pheasant the first time like a few years ago. Then a turkey. Now I'm ready to do deer because I'm from Texas. I know. I want to. I want to (laughs) get that lined out next year. We have to work on that. Yes, Uh, I'm excited about that. We need to figure that. But what I love about the Second Amendment is a lot of like a lot the passion around firearms. Um, for you may have started with advocacy, like, Hey, you know, I have mm-hmm. I come from a place of, you know, being a, a survivor mm-hmm. and now I, I want more tools to be able to protect myself. But then now you're also learning that guns, you know, in this journey or this season yeah. of your life, you've learned and discovered that guns just aren't for personal protection. They're also really fun and right. they bring so many extraordinary experiences that are really enriching to our lives. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what, you know, with the two way advocacy, advocacy movement, you know, when people start talking about, you know, banning high capacity magazines, quote mm-hmm. unquote, which these aren't high capacity. Right. These are standard capacity magazines. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of people in competitive shooting sports that are relying on those mm-hmm. to compete in our our sports right um that you know these are not things that are um foreign in the shooting world or community um and the media just really wants to paint this giant blemish on um things that we use as for recreation Mm -hmm. and it's just it's a it's a terrible thing that's happening and we really have to have more voices of people that are like hey i started at a journey with 2a advocacy because of protection but i've learned along the way that this is fun and I can provide for my family. We were talking earlier today yes. about you cooking turkey <laughs> for your family and yes, bringing that harvest it. home. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're going to be able to enrich the lives of your children with that experience. And, you know, this is just opening the doors. You're just getting started on hunting, which is super awesome. I love that. Well, I can't wait to get my kids involved. Yeah. And because I didn't grow up with that at all or anything. So now that I know, I'm like, okay, well, how old are you? Like, when can they start? Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, I can't wait till they have their first trip. And yeah. right now it's boy and girl. So it's like, I could go on a trip with my little one, my little girl one day. And then my husband could go on. And like that type of stuff, I think yeah. is all part of, you know, just things to be able to enrich, you know, the whole family life, but through, you know, learning also to teach them about proper safety when it comes to firearm ownership and all what of that to do is part of that. What do you if they come across another kid, if they're at a friend's house right. that is handling an improperly stored right. firearm or how do, you know, how do they be responsible and handle those situations? And these are conversations that every parent should be having with their kid because mm-hmm. just because you don't have a firearm in your home doesn't mean that somebody else does not Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, these are important things to instill in our children. And I think, you know, if we look back as, as soon as ago as like one generation, these were conversations that were had constantly. You know, firearms were kept in the corner of a, a living room unstored and sometimes loaded. And I'm not an advocate for that. But the conversations have switched and changed to where people don't even talk about it. Like right. what what happens when? What happens if right. heaven forbid you go to someone's house and they're, you know, irresponsibly stored firearms right. or in the hands of their children. And, you know, these are things that as responsible gun owners, we really advocate teaching safe, responsible gun ownership, safe firearm storage, mm-hmm. instilling in children what to happen, what what can happen and what they should do if they encounter a situation like that. And I think, you know, you being such a strong two way advocate is is incredible that you put that right back into your children, which hopefully will, you know, reach out into your, your community as well. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's it's just kind of a generational thing is, uh, you know, as a Christian, I know the concept of 
and I, for, for those who are Christians as well, the concept of discipleship, right? Yes. And they're always talking about the, that your children are, um, like, they're forced disciples. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're people that you, that you every day get to pour into. And what you pour into them is going to go out into society. Yeah. They're going to be adults and go out and make decisions based on, on what you're, you're doing. And so all of this is stuff like we get the opportunity. We've been mm-hmm. right now. It's really hard with them being really little. But all of this, they're hearing they they're know learning. everything, you know, sometimes I'm just like, they know a lot more than I think, but they're going to bring that out to other people and teach other people. And, um, you kind of get to start a whole, like, again, my parents are from Nigeria, didn't know anything about the second amendment. None of that. Like if almost what they saw was, um, unfortunately in a, in a country that was full with corruption of, of police officers, maybe they'll come, maybe they won't. If they do, you have to pay them, you know, like that type of concept to come to America where like there's a rule of law and, when you call the police, they come. But at the end of the day, now I'm like telling my mom, like, look, and from all good efforts, maybe they're going to come, but they're probably not going to get there in, in time. seconds. <laughs> right. Or in time. Mm-hmm. So this is what a firearm is. This is how you use it. This is how it's safe. Like, it's just completely changing the dynamic of my family. And I just. Are your parents now two way advocates as well? They're, they're, they're me advocates. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I like to say. Um, they're okay with. I think she is she has have a single mother and she um has just been very open to mm-hmm. hearing like I saw my I was at work and I, I my friend saw you on Fox News talking about this and I'm just so proud of you. Now, does that change her like ideas of like who she's going to vote for? It hasn't yet. But the thing <laughs> but is she's thought differently about it. Because of how she was raised perhaps you know, there's some fear associated with right, it. Right, absolutely. And so I, I get to it, teach her. Yeah, and there's yeah. a lot of women, and I've seen this so many times, which there's there's a company or a group out there called Shoot Like a Girl. Mm. And I'm sure you're familiar with Karen Butler, but they have yeah. a trailer. It's a simulation trailer. And they go around to uh, primarily a lot of Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops, uh, but a lot of outdoor events and stuff. And um, they actually do outreach where you can use their simulation system right, in their right. real firearms. And they have eight. They have a CO2 cartridge in them, so you can practice racking the slide, shooting an AR, all of these things with 80% recoil that's created from the CO2. So you get to have that shooting experience without firing a projectile. Right. So it takes a lot of the apprehension out of the shooting experience. Mm-hmm. And you know what I love about them is is women will often come in and they're so scared. And Mm. you can see the fear on them. And then after they shoot the simulation system a few times, they're like, oh, this isn't scary. This is fun. Wow. I just, and they have this total aha moment and it opens their mind up and opens the door for them to actually becoming interested in shooting sports because at the end of the day, shooting sports are really fun. Uh, (laughs) Like competitive shooting is super fun. And, um, you know, taking that, uh, that mystery out of firearms and instead of it being something scary and turning it into, or, you know, trying to get some type of attention on the fact that it's fun and Mm -hmm. that they're not scary is, is, is an uphill battle at this point. Yeah. But there's a lot of great groups that are helping combat that. A lot of great groups out there. (laughs) And that was another thing I was going to say is that, uh, particularly with women, like, you know, in the women's groups, there's so many different women's groups. I mean, we're here for, you know, Ewa. women. Yeah. So we're, you know, and I've been doing stuff with them for years and, and sometimes there's, there's sort of perception that, and there are people who always wanted to be a, kind of like a scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, if you're a woman's group, that's the only woman's group you can be part of. But we don't think about that with like GOA and NRA yeah. and all these great groups have been doing stuff for decades. Like, take my money, take my money as long as you're fighting for my rights. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's the same thing. I just, I just love like being a part of these groups and being a part of generation of like so much, so many more women who are coming into gun ownership through hunt. Look at the thing is that they're coming through different avenues. So like through hunting Mm -hmm. and that was our first experience ever. My first actual firearm was a shotgun because I was planning on going hunting. Ah. Never did until later. I didn't know (laughs) that. That was my first (laughs) firearm. And I was like, I want to go hunting and never did till later, but it worked out because at the end of the day, we're all, we're all on the same team. Mm-hmm. So whether it's like the different factions in this two way world in general of like, well, I, I prefer to do more hunting stuff. Well, it doesn't mean you can't also do, you know, second amendment stuff yeah. or activism or advocacy or, you know, shooting groups or competition shooting. Yeah. And like all of that goes together and all that to say, because, you know, sometimes I'll talk to people and it's like, well, I'm for this, but nobody needs this type of firearm. Mm-hmm. Right. Or, you know, vice versa. The need word the really need. freaks me. You don't need that for a deer hunt. <laughs> you don't need that. 
Yeah. You know what? You get to make that decision because that is something personal to mm-hmm. you. You can make a decision. But when the government, who has a monopoly of power, makes that decision for you, then it's not a decision, is yeah. it? No, it's the it's choice not. that you have, the choices that you're left with. So that's the thing is, like, we all have to come together and remember. I mean, the assault weapons ban and all of these things. Failed. Epic failure. Well, yeah, but they passed it through the House. I'm <clears throat> Right. I mean, and they're trying to pass it through the Senate. So it's like things like that. It's just like they're going to continue to do that, but we have to be on the same team within our group mm-hmm. so that we know, regardless if it's an AR-15 they're trying to ban or if they decide, you know what, hunting doesn't need to exist anymore, mm-hmm. right? Like, because a lot of them will say that. Um, whatever firearm you yeah. you choose to have for whatever desire you have, obviously for a safe reason, um, to defend your life or others, or for shooting or for recreational sports or for hunting, you have a God given right to all of that. It mm-hmm. says to keep and bear arms, not, Shall not hunting be arms, right? Not hunting <clears throat> arms, not you know us, not you know I'm gonna go out shooting for recreational sports arms, whatever arms. It is to protect you from a tyrannical oppressive government that wants to make decisions for you Mm -hmm. and that is why we have that second amendment enshrined in the second in the constitution is for that very reason yeah absolutely and and that is one thing that um that you can't argue i mean shall not be infringed Mm -hmm. it it's it's really simple simple. i really really but it makes it they make it very hard (laughs) yeah and and i do and i i think that you know being a safe responsible gun owner um having that right to own a firearm is is a huge responsibility. Mm-hmm. And I take my responsibility as a Second Amendment advocate very seriously, which is why I also get training. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, coming here to Armed Women of America, um, I was teaching positional rifle class, uh, shooting class, so ladies can go out and hopefully be more successful while hunting. But there was a lot of classes here from drawing from a holster, you know, basics and handgun shooting. We had shotgun shooting. Um, And I really encourage people, you know, if you are a 2A advocate or if you want to make that choice to carry or if you're looking at possibly going hunting, training is the best thing you can do is invest in yourself Mm -hmm. because, um, you know, taking the fear out of a firearm, if you're new to the firearms industry or firearms ownership, taking the fear out, learning how to handle a firearm, how to be safe with them, how to store them. All of these things are really, really important. Um, you know, not just taking a firearm and saying, okay, well, I want, I'm going to carry a gun. I'm a first time gun owner as a woman and just throwing it in your purse. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a lot of things uh, that go into the backside of being a, a responsible gun owner and mm-hmm. safe when we're carrying and safe when we're practicing shooting sports and hunting with hunting, you know, obviously you go through hunter's education. And so we make sure that people are, understand how to cross fences safely or how to transport firearms safely. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a lot of things that go into that and, and being a safe, responsible gun owner, man, if you're a lady out there and you're looking for a place to train, there are so many great groups. Armed Moon of America is mm-hmm. one of them. We have girl in a gun yeah, clubs. Girl in a gun. That's awesome. um, NRA has a ton of mm-hmm. pistol rifle instructors. If you go online, get training. Yes. Um, knowledge is power and it's empowerment. Absolutely. And, and speaking of knowledge is power, it's like, I mean, become a, women who are just looking for that next level. Um, I mean, I remember it was like a goal, personal goal of mine. It's like, I want to be a trainer. I want to be an instructor. I think there's something about when you're, you know, you're going to be teaching yeah. that information to other people. You just have a different like level. You step up in a different way that I think was just so helpful. Even if I wasn't going to teach after that, like, or even use my instructor training that it just, I think it gives you an insight that helps you to then also promote like the right fundamentals to other people yeah. and to yourself and to keep growing. And even if you don't get into competition shooting. Um, so like things like that, I think really do help the whole overall cause because then we can speak intelligently Mm -hmm. about the second amendment we can speak intelligently about stuff that when you see hear lies on the media and people talking about it you can completely just change and you can change people's minds and i think that's what we need to do is do more hearts and minds uh Mm -hmm. change we need to do a lot more of that training and there's great organizations doing that and um, I'm thankful for your voice and what you've been you. doing and how friendly and sweet you are. <laughs> and it really is oh. like, I hope people know, like, people, like, uh, just 
Um, you have people who do great, great stuff. So thank you. You're part of DC Project too, are you not? Yeah, I, I've. Uh, the last time I was with them was in 2019. I was their Colorado rep for mm -hmm. when they went to the DC Project, the DC um, event. So yeah, I've done work with them before. Now I'm doing stuff with you know Empower 2A. Mm -hmm. But that's all I was saying is that there's room for all of Everybody. us to do everything. Mm -hmm. So and, yeah. and we do similar stuff. So like GOA, like that's what. Our focus is, is gun rights. We don't even yeah. do really training or anything. We do training. It's outreach focus. Yeah. It's not like the NRA who, who started in training, but we've always been very no compromise gun rights. Well, we're trying to get more of the women of GOA to be the faces as well and go to D.C., but also mm -hmm. go to their state levels and go with GOA state directors and, and get more involved with the 2A fight. We have Zoom meetings once a month where we have Second Amendment experts in the field. So we've had Mar Representative Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene. Mm -hmm. um, we've had uh, people like Lauren Bobart, who's going to be you know joining Colorado. us soon in yeah. Colorado and then but, but then we also have um, experts who've been all over the field Marshall uh, Tig Davis and um, uh, Rhonda Mary who's a second amendment advocate and all over the gamut like people who we do zoom meetings with to get more fellowship of women mm -hmm. who just need a women only space to talk you know yeah. um, so that's what we do with Empower 2A as well but all do you of have a website for people to like launch to if yeah. they're listening to this podcast and they're like hey I I want to learn more about this. I want to get involved. I want to follow Antonia's mission and in, in your vision. How do, how do people find and reach out and become activated with what you're doing? Yeah. Well, first of all, email me directly. I would love to hear your voice um, and talk to you. Antonia at Empowered 2A. I'm sorry. That was my old my old email before gun owners. And Antonia at uh, gunowners.org. But then we have empowered2a.org as well. If you just want to go to the website and learn more about Empowered, and you can contact us through that as well. But um, we're also on, on social media, so Empowered2A. So there's um, Empowered under underscore 2A and you just follow me as well as Antonia underscore Okafor um, if you want to learn more about how to get involved with women of GOA. I just cannot thank you enough for everything that you're doing with your Second Amendment advocacy, being an incredibly strong mother, uh, <laughs> being a, a, a Christian and, you know, embracing those values and being proud of those values and, you know, taking that to the world and saying, hey, you know, these are the things that are important to me and I want to help inspire my community. And with what you're doing, it, it really does. There's a woman out there right now that's listening to this podcast that needs to know it's okay to to go from maybe not being okay with guns mm. to discovering that, hey, guns are not the bad guys here. Guns are not the, the bad tools. Guns are tools for safety. Yeah. They're tools for confidence. They're tools for empowerment. They're tools for fun. Uh, they're tools for harvesting. I mean, yeah. firearms are for responsible firearms owners. And, right. And it's okay to be a gun owner. And the vast majority of us are. Yeah. I just want to, statistics shows over and over again that we are, we're responsible in every facet of life, not just with firearms. So um, we're the people that I'm glad to be a part of the community with and with people like you. And sorry, I just started tearing up when you said about like the women, because there are women who are going to be watching this and mm -hmm. I get it all the time. I love the stories of like, you know, I so many, like, I'm coming out of a domestic violence situation, mm -hmm. or I'm I'm a, I'm a survivor in some other aspects. So many women, strong women, who are f trying to find their power, empowerment back, their mm -hmm. power back. Like that's I remember that point for myself. Like I resonate because there was a time where I was trying to find my power back, and through Second Amendment, through gun ownership, regardless of how you do it, whatever hunting, etc. It is bring your power back. Yeah. And I, I just, it's, that's the movement that we're in is mm -hmm. we're giving power back to women. And it's mm -hmm. such, it's so beautiful to be a part of that experience. I think. Yeah. And like I said earlier, we all want the same thing. We all want to be safe in our homes. Yes. We all want to be safe in our communities mm -hmm. and we all have the right to be safe Absolutely. in our homes and our communities. We do. And, um, mm -hmm. You know, our Second Amendment right is the one thing that really is our, we can be our, choose to be our own first responder right. and our own first line of defense. And um, for any of you that are looking for more training, looking for more information, go to the Gun Owners America website, go to your website, email you, find you on Instagram, find you on Facebook. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're like literally hustling out of here to catch a flight <laughs> and you That's have my life your That's husband life. and your two babies are like outside <laughs> they're somewhere like, ready <laughs> they're like where is mom <laughs> so i you know i appreciate you and it's, you. it's you're so busy and you know you have so much going on and i just want to thank you for for joining us all for this episode of the wild and uncut podcast from the hotel room here <laughs> at our yes. moment of america <laughs> thank you so much antonia thanks for having me Christy. my pleasure
A buck's antler growth potential is tied directly to his nutritional intake. The quicker they recover from the stress of the rut and the harsh elements found in winter months, the sooner they can begin new antler development. Supplemental nutrition, like the Rack One system, promotes healthy deer herds and jumpstarts new antler growth. Rack One's grow phase is specifically designed to provide everything that deer need to recover and reach their genetic potential. Accelerator is the apex when it comes to optimizing whitetail mineral intake. And big game butters fuel deer with 22% protein and 44% fat to boost antler growth and supercharge recovery. To learn more about the grow, scout, or hunt systems from Rack One, visit the website at huntrackone.com. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.